Hello viewers, thank you for joining me. If you've been around my channel for a while, you've probably already heard this, but I love Digimon. It was such a big part of my childhood, and I often credit it with being the series that got me into anime as a whole, and I really don't mean that as an exaggeration. Even as a little kid, I was so drawn to it partially because, though it was aimed at kids, it felt like it was taking us seriously as an audience. The stakes were higher, the consequences felt real, and the characters each had so much personality, and you got to watch them grow as people over the course of the series. No western kids show I'd seen could compare. As soon as I learned that it was considered a different type of show, anime. My fondness for the genre was immediate. So you can imagine how excited I was when the Digimon Tri movies were announced a few years ago. I watched and reviewed them all, and they did introduce some cool ideas, and I was definitely too nostalgic not to enjoy them, mostly. But I do have to admit that they were kind of a mess, not following through on those ideas, leaving quite a bit unexplained at the end. Honestly, it felt almost like they started rewriting the idea halfway through. So, objectively speaking, the Tri-series was pretty disappointing, but that didn't affect my excitement when this last movie was announced. Once I've decided I'm definitely going to watch something, and there was no question here, I do my best to stay as blind as possible. What little I had gleaned about it ahead of time came from the cover of the DVD, the Zero Two kids were just as front and center as the original Digidestined, for one. That had been one of my biggest complaints about Try, that the younger kids were mentioned a lot, but never really made an appearance. So that was promising, and I'm pleased to say they do follow through on it. And the other big thing was that everything from the title to the summary suggests that this really will be the final Digimon Adventure movie, and so it's fitting that this is a movie about closure. Our original group, barring TK and Kari, of course, are not just in college, but already graduated and working in their fields, or at least getting ready to. What's making Matt and Ty stand out now is that they're the only two who are still undecided about their futures, which makes them the first to respond when another digital crisis pops up. Digidestined across the world, are starting to fall into comas, and then their Digimon partners disappear. Izzy is approached by a young woman named Menoa, a child prodigy not unlike Izzy himself. Menoa is already a college professor, and she studies Digimon-related issues. She tells them she's discovered a new Digimon named Eosmon, who's been stealing these Digidestin's consciousness and storing it as data, and when their first attempt to fight Eosmon doesn't go so well, Menowa shares some even worse news, in response to why they can't just jump back in and try again. She explains that as a Digidestin gets older, their bond with their partner weakens. Matt and Ty can already see a glowing ring on the back of their Digivices, when the ring fades, their Digimon will disappear, and every Digivolution from here on out will speed up that process. It's not the happiest premise, but there was a lot I loved about this movie. It really feels like it's for the fans, as we're all grown up ourselves now. A lot of long-running kids' shows feel like they're frozen in time, and that really hasn't been the case with these Digimon movies. Matt and Ty's existential crises about what to do with their lives were depressingly relatable, but at the same time, I felt almost proud to see all the others doing so well. I literally watched these kids grow up over the years. That was almost as emotional as the story itself. I do wish we got to see more of them all, but I understand the time constraints of a single movie. I'm even at peace with the idea that they'll all have to say goodbye someday. Digimon was always sort of a Peter Pan-type story. The kids were meant to save the world, and then go back to their regular lives. This movie actually brought me back to another childhood love of mine. I kind of expected them to go the Code Lyoko route and close down the connection to the world altogether. That's something that's not addressed in Last Evolution, the dangers of having Digimon around in everyday life. The movie opens with the kids defending the city from a Parrotmon attack, 
and there's a lot of collateral damage. But if there was some kind of public uproar about that, we don't see it. I guess the point I'm trying to make is that if there's any way I am dissatisfied with the ending, it's that it doesn't feel quite finished enough. But I'm sure they just wanted to preserve the hope a bit, make sure it wasn't totally depressing. Movies can be so much harder not to spoil. There will be some specifics I want to go into, but later, to wrap up the safe part of this review. Last Evolution was a really good way to finish out this tale for the older kids. It was relatable as an adult, but hit all the right nostalgia points, too. It's definitely not a place you can just jump into the story for the first time, but I wouldn't skip it if you're already a Digimon fan. And though Mako does make a brief appearance here, Last Evolution really doesn't call back to the Tri movies at all, so if you missed those, it shouldn't impact your enjoyment or understanding of this one. Now, for a few more specific thoughts that will definitely contain spoilers. I think this movie did a great job with Menoa. She turns out to be the culprit, mentally and emotionally broken from the experience of outgrowing her own Digimon partner. She created Eosmon, and when they steal a Digidestin's consciousness, it traps their mind in a world where they'll never grow up and get to stay with their partners forever. This movie looked great all around, but Menoa's facial expressions when the kids realize she's a bit unhinged were a high point. But also, Last Evolution didn't have time to catch up with everyone, but I'm glad they took the time to explore Menoa. It would be a hard separation for anyone, but Menoa took it particularly badly, and that makes sense because she was particularly young when it happened. Only 14, I believe she said. But at 14, she was already headed off to college. Child prodigy and all that. She never really found a place with her peers, so she basically forced herself to grow up faster so she could leave that stage of her life behind. But still, no matter how smart she may have been, she was 14. Of course she wasn't prepared to deal with the loss of the only real friend she'd ever had. I think I would have been sympathetic to her motivations anyway, but I started to see Menoa in a different light after her little flashback sequence. I feel like if Izzy hadn't gone through their original adventure and learned to connect with others, this could have happened to him. It's fitting that he's the one she interacts with the most, because there are definitely some parallels there. On the other hand, the lowest point of this movie for me, unfortunately, was the handling of Sora's character. Which I hate to say, because one, Sora's always been one of my favorite characters, and two, she's barely even in this movie, but they take the time to show her a few times during that final battle, which she's not a part of. She's not captured and brainwashed by Menoa, and she doesn't seem to even consider going to try and save the ones who are, which would be all of her friends, by the way. It's unclear exactly how much Sora knew. There's no scene of her so much as texting the others to catch up with what's been going on, whether she even knows that her time with Biomon will be coming to an end soon. That's the only way I could sort of explain her response. If she knew the end was coming and that fighting would shorten that time even more. But even then, I wouldn't say it justifies her not trying to help her friends, and that's just not the Sora I know. I don't know which adventure taught her that hiding away in her room and not fighting back ever solved her problems, but it wasn't any of the ones I watched. I guess it's just a little extra disappointing, because Sora is really the only character I feel like they fail in this way. A lot of the others didn't get a lot of screen time, but they felt true to their characters when we did see them. I did love seeing the Zero Two kids do their part, and it makes sense that they'd have more time to help. The end is sad, but it's also quiet and peaceful and kind of beautiful too. They leave us with those last few lines about how the adventure's never really over, and there's always hope we'll see them again someday. But to be honest, I've always really liked the stories that end. Digimon is so much about getting to watch these kids grow up, it never felt like it was meant to go on forever. 
I do feel like there's another conflict in this universe that should be discussed, that having that open connection to the digital world really isn't good for the real world, but being a Digidestined is such a widespread experience now, I can kind of understand why it hasn't come back up. But even if we don't get closure for the whole world, I'm satisfied with where this left our main team. Last Evolution was a solid end to this tale for me. I recommend seeing it if you somehow missed this one. Thank you for watching.